When I woke up, it was bright outside. I felt a warmth in my hand. Kazuki was still holding my hand, like she'd been when I fell asleep. Just held her hands Kazuki, the whole night. Okirunda. So lewd. <sighs> she must not have been fully awake yet because she didn't let go. Okirote. She did a double take. She rubbed her eyes a few times, gawking her hand in mine, then looked at my face and then back at her hand again. <laughs> her face was bright red and she was looking downward, but she didn't let go. So you reaction. I'm not used to this stuff either, you know. There's nothing in cool cat press about how to deal with this situation. Crap, I'm starting to sweat. If Katsuki noticed, she might think I was creepy. Finally, my hand was free. My body ached all over because I slept in such a weird position, and my skin still stung a little. I remember the sensation from when I'd gone swimming as a little kid and gotten sunburned. I closed my eyes and I could still see the red flame. It gave me goosebumps. I quickly shook the image out of my mind. After I used the restroom, I got Kazuki's permission to turn on the TV. It was about 9am. We were late for school, but I didn't feel like going anyway. I decided to skip today. <laughs> okay, we're just gonna be lazy. There was a news program on, and just like I thought, it was talking about what had happened last night. Most of the video was of the burning cars around the front gate, though. Oh, is that? Well, I don't know. Is this a TV? It looks like more like a computer monitor, though, than a TV. But maybe, well, maybe it's both. I don't know. <laughs> I guess. Well, I was thinking, like, usually, you know. Usually you want like a full-on gaming PC, but maybe Kazuki doesn't need that. She just plays the MMO, right? So it's not like she needs like a high-end computer or anything like that. I guess maybe she just uses this laptop to play instead. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, most of it was of the burning cars around the front gate, though. Terror. Like, also, they didn't like. I guess that object didn't go away. I imagine I would think that the portal device would just, you know, disappear, but instead, it's still there. It's just in the world. Oops. The mysterious object must be what Kazuki had called a portal device. That thing was still there. You know, wouldn't it cause more casualties actually if there's no like warning? You know, no caution tape. Did some like police officers accidentally touch it or something? Yeah, would the police be okay if they touched it? Would they disappear like that woman? I took another look at my uniform. It had been too dark last night for me to see, but it was covered in blood. The blood hadn't even soaked through to my undershirt. It made me feel sick just thinking about whose blood it was. I wanted to change, but of course, there were no men's clothes in Kazuki's room. Maybe I should borrow her PC later and order some. Well, I mean, you could wear this. You know, this tracksuit. Might be a bit of a, you know, tight fit. But, maybe. How much do the police know anyway? D did they know who that suspicious woman was or who she was after? If the police did find out and came to question me, they'd inevitably learn about what happened after that. And even if she was dead, that was self-defense. They wouldn't prosecute me. I mean, well, I guess, I don't know, depending on the... Depending on the country, I guess, or depending on the laws, the local laws. Um, even in self-defense, you know, you might still get charged with murder, but... Uh, I remember, well, that was kind of like a thing in Phoenix, right, actually, you know, the, despite the fact that even if uh, one of your clients, anyway, in Phoenix, right, if um, they were, like, uh, charged with self-defense, 
uh, the whole thing is that you still would still go through the go through the case because even in self defense, um, it's still it was still bad. I guess. I guess I don't know. Maybe like very like classic Japanese law. You know, very like old Japanese law. Even if you kill someone in self defense, you will still get the same penalty, and that might have been like you know the death penalty or something. I don't know. Well, uh, right. Of course they wouldn't. They wouldn't prosecute me. At least that's what I try to tell myself. When I remember what happened yesterday, I felt like my legs were going to start shaking again. I was worried about Adamura, but I didn't know how to get in touch with her. I decided to go down to the public a public public phone in the dorm lobby and call Serika to see if she knew anything. She told me that she and Kurusu were hiding Adamura in my RV. They happened to run into her last night after we'd been attacked by that woman. I was about to complain about them, you know, letting her use my house, but changed my mind. What was important was that Adamura was safe. Serika and Kurusu were both very worried about me. All Adamura had told them was that I had been attacked by a woman who could control fire. But I was as vague as possible. There is no way I could tell them what happened, uh, what had happened yesterday. I hung up quickly, without telling her where I was. Then I went back to the room. That's what Kurusu had told me on the phone. The police were probably investigating. Kazuki, can you hear me? Kazuki didn't answer. She still didn't say a word. She'd done so much talking last night, but now she was back to her usual self. Kasuki shook her head. What did that mean? It probably has something to do with the way she suddenly started talking last night. Hmm, you know, maybe that's why she keeps saying Kamo or maybe because if she states an absolute like as if um, if she does that, you know, she makes like a, a very like, objective statement, then it becomes reality or at least, you know possibly, you know, possibly becomes reality because before she was just yelling like a bunch of random stuff that uh, she didn't say maybe to and uh, it wasn't like it happened instantaneously but sometimes I guess like the portal device sometimes it happens so that's why she's always saying kamo or maybe because if she says maybe then that means you know it, it isn't like a absolute statement and it doesn't become reality or at least hopefully at least, uh, at least you know that's what I imagine she's trying to like stop from happening anyway <laughs> Kansuki pointed to the low table in the center of the room, which is actually, I don't know, it's actually interesting because I was c complaining before about how like reality bending and everything is just overpowered, you know, it kind of ruins the whole theme and the plot and everything because, you know, you can just bend reality it's so easy. But in Kazuki's case, you know, she doesn't want to bend reality, you know, she doesn't want to accidentally change reality because then, you know, it's gonna be wrong and everything's gonna be messed up. So, that's actually kind of interesting, I don't know. Assuming that I'm right, it could be something else, but I don't know. It is interesting. Hey, there was a small laptop on it. Oh. Hey, it's the game! Can I play the game? Uh, Nightheart, Kasuke Hana's Giggle Mega, especially one of that. The critical point points to remember a sound, and that was her voice. You can spread the information energy of a delusion with her voice. If you want to start a class, how about a communicable gigalomania? What makes it difficult is that she lacks the power of controller, she doesn't have any other powers. Uh, TLDR, her power is shit here, sucks to be her! Okay, I guess she's typing it out. Though I wonder, well, is she typing in the public chat? Because that would like, 
everyone could see that, at least if it's like local anyway. Uh, uh, care points are sound. You can spread the information energy to lose your voice. Maybe we'll get a medium. So this was your lack of power controlling. She doesn't have any of the powers. Inter well, interesting that, you know, it seems like a, like a real life, like, MMO, you know, the graphics and everything. Uh, the, the person she was talking about was typing in the chat window on the screen. I was shocked to see the handle Nightheart on the screen. Yeah. Is she like, you know, is she like, uh, you know, in RuneScape, does this guy cause the Zima? Basically the highest level character in the game or whatever, you know, the strongest one. Is she like that? Lightning fast Nightheart? The one who sometimes went by Nightheart do the Blitzschnell too. The guy responsible for the S propeller just before the earthquake six years ago? Hmm, okay, well, maybe not that, but like... Six years ago? What do you mean by that? I don't know. This is like Chaos Head lore or something? The one people said might have been deeply involved in the quake itself. The GOAT. There was so much I wanted to ask him. I could write a whole article just on him. Was Nightheart a gigalomaniac too? <sighs> Wait, is Nightheart, well, actually, is that her or is it someone else? I can't tell. Kazuki type expressionlessly away at, the, uh, away at the keyboard. Oh, okay. Don't get jealous. Well, why the hell would I be jealous? You were a god in ESO, but you're a trash new ESO too, right? Your level is lower than mine. Okay. Never mind. Because uh, I thought, well, that's because I moved to ESO from after the beta test. And a noob like you probably doesn't know this, but all the top ESO player uh, one players hated ESO too. I mean, seriously, no character transfers? Of course, we held a big process. I put it together. I was surprised by how many top ranked players showed up. It's goddamn nerds. Two of the players were the top killed on the server. The guy who was famous for never logging out ever once since the game started. Yeah. The super popular chick with over 200 people on her friend list. What a quiz job to cap every class. Okay. It was them and hell of a lot of others. Over 30 of the best players were there. Even the lunatic who took out the Empire Dragon King solo. The Emperor, four kings, ten heroes, and three gods, and a whole bunch of others promised us they'd help. We were all ready to protest and serve for days. Not one of us had anything going on in the real world. I moved to ESO2 only after that war. I'm glad you're history before you open your mouth, fool. <laughs> Basically, I've been playing for longer than you, which makes me the boss. Oh, buy me a yakisoba sandy. Katsuo Hana. Wow, lol, you summoned all that in a single line. And you, Kazuana, how would dare you boss, boss me, the god of yourself around? I will dox your ass any day of the bitch, uh, any of the way, any of the day of the week, bitch. Okay, anyway. Okay, I, I thought Nightheart was uh, Hana, but actually it's somebody else, I guess. She's talking to Nightheart, I guess. I, and for some reason, Nightheart knows that Hana is a gigalomaniac. Is this the whole gigalomaniac thing so widespread now? You would think it would be top secret, but no, she's just on the internet, just, you know, just giving out that information anywhere, I guess. And I assume, you know, all the, all this, all that was, you know, the ESO one stuff probably is a reference to Chaos Head. I'm not exactly sure um, what the reference is, exactly, you know, but probably, probably implied that some of those characters that were mentioned probably were characters in the first game, first visual novel. Boss, but all those boss. Kazuhana, level 53! Only 53? Kazuhana was her nickname. <laughs> no, you know, on the Japanese keyboard, you can actually uh, type Kaomoji, actually, and then you get like a list. But anyway, she showed me that she had them register as shortcuts on the keyboard, but that wasn't important right now. Supposedly, Kazuki and Nightheart knew each other online for being in the same ESO2 guild. <laughs> Kazuki nodded. Lightning fast Nightheart, the legend himself. So the rumors were true after all. I was so excited I was getting goosebumps all over my body. A lot of people said he was a fake after the Esper incident, but they were wrong. <laughs> Kazuki 
A year after the earthquake. That was years ago. Yeah, they, well, okay. Because again, because um, Takuru, Takuru mentioned that Nightheart was someone that was involved in the earthquake incident, or whatever, six years ago or something, or at least caused the earthquake and everything. Um, I thought that was Kazuki, so that would that would have been a, a big twist. But as it turns out, no, it's not Kazuki. So if that's the case, Nightheart is probably. I mean, if I had to guess, this is like a completely random guess, but I, it probably is true, <laughs> to be honest, but um, it's probably the main character of the last game, is what I'm thinking, you know? It's, pro it's probably the main character, Chaos Head, if I had to guess. Anyway, so she knew about it this whole time. I wanted to ask why she didn't help me when I was trying to learn to use my power, use my telekinesis, but I stopped myself. Probably has something to do with the reason why she never talked. She had to put the uh, she had the power to put the information energy from her delusions into her voice. Nightheart had given it the long and if you ask me nonsensical name of communicable gigglomania. You know, if that's the case, if if the main character of the last game is actually a character in this game, like or at least, you know, indirectly, why didn't he help us, you know? When all these other things were happening, but uh, Okazuki nodded. Saishua,周囲でおかしなこと、よく起きるかもって思ったくらいだった。例えば、友達の持ってたペンが可愛くて欲しいなって言ってたら、次の日なぜかそのペン、私のものになってたり、家で飼ってた白黒のブチネコ
Oh, he's dead. What word was this? You should say it right now. Hmm. Well, yeah, okay, that, okay. Well, that, that also explains why she's so, um, talk. I mean, it's hard to tell because I'm not a native Japanese speaker. But I guess the way she's talking, Takaru said that she was speaking a little bit weird. I think it's because she's enunciating every single, like, um, uh, every single, like, syllable, you know, slowly and deliberately. Um, but, but, but that's probably because she's making sure that she's saying the right words, basically. You know, she's not ex accidentally saying something that would, I don't know, kill Takaru or something, you know? That's why she's talking so slowly. So that's why she didn't talk. If she talked, her power might activate. And if what Nightheart said was true, she couldn't control it. There's no way to prove whether or not that what had happened to her in middle school was really because of her power. But even so, if she'd been able to control it, she probably asked herself that question a million times. Maybe remaining silently was her way of punishing herself. I asked Kazuki's permission to type a question in Nightheart. No, dox your ass. Why are you so mean, Nightheart? Um, may I ask a question? Why can't Kazuki control power? No emoji. Who are you? A member of her club at school. Oh, Miyashiro? Oh, he just knows. He just doxed everyone. And how did you know my name? Kazuki told me about you yesterday. She said there was a moron in her club who has psychic powers, but didn't know how to use them, lol. Mm -hmm. Okay. Her face went red. She frankly shook her head. かも。かも、maybe. Maybe. maybe. Oh, again, she's, she's saying maybe so that she doesn't accidentally use her power. Uh, why is it that Kazuki can't control the powers? This is just what I've gleaned from talking to her, but... Oh, what I'm about to tell you is top secret stuff. Don't go around repeating it. You know how you need to use a shared idea or a real Buddha delusion, right? In my case, I chose a target to show delusion and plug the delusion directly into their mind. Sometimes a delusion involves sex. Other times it also involves sex. On other occasions, there's also sex. You can skip the jokes. Okay. I was serious. I don't, rem I don't remember Edo scenes in Chaos Head, anyway. What's important is that you are plugging delusion directly into the target's brain. That's what creates a clear mental image that can be shared. This clear image is what's needed for a successful real boot. But Kazuki can't do that. All Kazuki can do is spread the information energy from her delusions via sound. Sound contains no visual information, which means the mental image itself becomes vague. It's a lot less reliable than implanting an image directly. Just like it's hard to visualize an image just based off a description, right? Of course, a taco like me can do that easy, as long as it has something to do with sex. But Kazuki's power has a lot, one other trait that makes it unique. Anyone who hears a voice is able to echo it. That's why I called it communicable. It's just like a rumor, it grows and changes and it spreads like a game of telephone. I imagine a guy giving a speech in front of a station. That's her, spreading her delusions to a random group of people. Now imagine someone passing by hears that delusion, takes it to school, and tells it to a friend there. And let's say that person repeats it to someone else. The contents of this speech echo and expand. The same way Kazuki's sound can spread even when she's not there. That's, makes, that, that's what makes her different from a typical gigalomaniac. But even if it echoes, extremely rare for it to real boot. Like I said before, illusions spread by sound are very vague. And if details are different, there's no shared image to be real booted. 
But once in a while, there's an extremely low probability that several people would imagine the exact same image when they hear a given word. When that happens, Kazuki's delusion is rebooted, whether she wants it to be or not. When Kazuki speaks, uh, she has no way of knowing there's an astronomical low chance that two people somewhere will share the same mental image. It's all coincidence. Okay. Also, I had to like read really fast because it's like automatic text. But that's kind of interesting. Kind of like um, uses that weird theory. I don't know what it's, what it's called, but like, it's the it's the idea that um, when when you think of the color red, for example, you think like for like a tomato or whatever, right? But how do you know that my red, or the way I see the color red, is the same way that you see the color red? You know, there's no like at least empirical way to like prove that. We can all, you know, agree that a tomato is red, but like, we don't really know for sure because you can't really like, um, you know, see each other from each other's perspective, you know? If that makes any sense, we can't like share our brain waves with each other, so we don't know for sure, I guess. But I guess, you know, how uh, Kazuki's powers work is that if it happens to be that someone shares the same exact image to think an exact same thing, that's when something gets real booted. Which is weird, but then how did the portal device get real booted? Is it like, there was like a bunch of like MMO players in the crowd or something? Because she was yelling because um, there's a bunch of people crowding around the burning cars, I guess. Like somehow, you know, everyone just, at least I guess maybe two people just thought, hey, portal device? That's the one from uh, ESO2, right? Mm, you know, and then it became real for some reason. Well, that was a lot of permission to take in. I tried as hard as I could to understand everything the Nightheart was saying. It's all a coincidence. Whee! A rumor could, under certain circumstances, turn into a form of demagoguery capable of altering an entire society. So Kazuki's power was the same thing as that? That would explain why it wasn't safe for her to talk. It must have been a terrifying possibility to, uh, uh, to her. Really. A terrifying pers uh, possibility to her. Uh, so what about that ESO2 portal device? It was real booted last night when Kazuki spoke. Oh, so that's news story of you guys. Why a portal device? I just told you that she can't control the powers, right? Someone I've heard it just happened to know about ESO2's portal devices and just happened to be real booted. That's all. It's just a coincidence. Guzen. Of course, you could say it's a coincidence that other things she said weren't real booted. The second the woman who was attacking us had touched the portal, she disappeared. Where do you think she went? Oh, you know. She's probably dead, right? Okay. He could type the words like they were nothing at all, even though it was something neither Kazuki nor I wanted to accept. That portal device was the only one that got real booted yet, right? I ran a net search and didn't see any others. In ESO2, if you touch a portal device, you get warped to another one. But if there's only one device, there's nowhere for you to warp to, right? She was probably transported to a dimensional rift or dissolved at a subatomic level. Of course, even though there were two portal devices, I don't think you'd actually be able to teleport between them. Basically, it only recreated its appearance. The code words appear on the computer's LCD monitor. Hazuki and I both stared at them. She was dead. The woman was dead. Hearing it from an objective third party made me want to throw up. Oh, sorry, I've got to log off. Gotta go to Nippon Bashi and get me a Yumi no Hara Mimi figure. Uh, Nippon Bashi, are you in Osaka? Sure, why not? Why so vague? I'm actually super busy these days, running all around the world. Haven't been able to make it to Akihabara in a while. Actually sucks. Today I'm gonna have an Oktaku merchandise hunting party. Furthermore, I'll be the only one participating. Last night I was so excited I only got two hours of sleep. Actually, did you hear about the last episode of Gun Barrel being cancelled? I, I know there's something going on with that. And the staff got to fire. So, okay, stop being in otaku mode. My otaku sense is tingling. The Mimi figure is going to be in high demand real soon now. That's why I'm probably going to get them while I can. I can make a fortune reselling them. Okay. 
Anyway, because I found lol. Logged out. Okay, I, I, I'm i 90% sure that's the main character for Chaos Head. I remember him being like a, a big old otaku. Or at least, you know, big fucking nerd him anyway. Uh, was this the kind of person that Nightheart was? You know, just a degenerate? This is, he doesn't sound very heroic, does he? He doesn't sound like a good person. I was a little disappointed, maybe. Well, his anime is probably really bad. Uh, our, well, our anime is also really bad, but anyway. It was a weekday, but he said he was going to Nippon Bashi. He also said he was traveling around the whole world. Both of those statements seem like lies, actually. Who was he, really? Hmm, I don't know. I didn't get to ask him about what happened six years ago either. Well, you play Chaos Head now. Uh, but there's no point in thinking about Nightheart now. What should we do now? Go to the police? And they'll probably not help. Maybe Shinjo? You know, Shinjo's a very, like, reliable guy. I should rip off. Oh, very quick mini rant. But I saw, like, a review on Chaos Shot, actually. Um, and basically, you know, I said the game was good and everything. But apparently, uh, they said that Shinjo was a bad character. They said he was like a detective cliche, detective nanny or whatever. I humbly disagree. I like Shinjo. He's just there to like keep these kids, um, you know, alive. He's doing his best, damn it. <laughs> anyway. Uh, okay, so go to police or pretend we don't know anything. <laughs> Should we pretend that we weren't even at the school last night? Should I tell Saruka and Kurisu? The rumors weren't something you, you could control. The more people that knew a secret, the more likely it was to leak. Yeah, we can't really lie to Aramura though. She's a lie detector, so... Kazuki <laughs> froze and looked at me pledgingly. I still didn't know why that woman had attacked us. It didn't seem to have anything to do with the return of the new generation madness, though. The way she attacked it was too different from the other murders. The most likely possibility was that she was a psychopath, but that was only a theory. A game theory, no. Maybe someone else was controlling her. It would be best to be careful. I should avoid attracting it. Uh, at, uh, I should avoid attracting any attention. The more I read visual novels, the more I just, I don't know, I just make really weird mistakes and I can't read them and my brain shuts down. Um, anyway, maybe I should shut down the newspaper club for a while too. For some reason, she apologized, even though it wasn't her fault. If anything, it was my fault for getting her involved. Well, you can always, like, write things. I don't know, well, you said your voice is like your power, right? You can just, you know, Kazuki, you can just get like a notepad, like a big giant notepad, you know? You always see an anime, but like, there's always like a silent character, well, not always, but like, you know, there's always a silent character that can't speak, but then they can like, draw things or write things, you know? So you can do that. Yeah. You can communicate through that way. I don't know why you haven't done that yet. Hmm. A similar theme. I imagine all the waifus are kind of like that. You know, they have these special powers, but they don't want it. Very similar to Aramura. She looked down, her expression sad. Her power was making her suffer. As an older student from her club, I should probably say something to her. She used her power to save me, even though she hated it. No, Kazuki. Kazuki,助けてくれてありがとう。感謝はしてるんだ。その、Kazuki自身は力を嫌っているかもしれないけどさ。
それにほらえっとそうあれだそんなに和樹の声悪くないと思う可愛い声してるって本当にお世辞じゃなくてだからそんなに自分の声のことを否定するなよ<笑> well, it's funny, well,、uh, Takaru is、uh, saying, like, Oh, your voice is cute, you should talk more. I don't think that's, <laughs> that's a problem, Takaru, but anyway. Wow, that was pretty embarrassing to say. I could feel the sweat beating on my forehead. b u k a z u k i didn't respond at all. She was looking down at her cell phone. He didn't hear a single thing. <laughs> uh, hmm? I looked closer and saw that there was a cord running it from it to her ears. Just listening to music. Just listening to music. She didn't even hear that. What the hell? I just had to go back to sleep. No. There's still blood in your clothes, by the way. She, like, I don't know, get new clothes, put the old ones in the laundry, you know? It's gonna be very conspicuous if you have, like, blood in your clothes in the middle of the day. I went to the corner of the room, buried my head in my knees, and tried to sleep. <sighs> For the next two days, Kazuki and I spent all, our room in this,、uh, all, uh, spent all our time in this room doing nothing at all. Yes, he could go more remote. A few days ago, I never would imagine I'd be living in the room of a girl from my club, but sadly, nothing romantic had happened at all. All I did was watch the news on TV. I wanted to look online, but Kazuki was using the computer the whole time and wouldn't give it to me. Too busy playing her MMO. <laughs> Even now, Kazuki was sitting in front of the only computer in the room a low spec compact laptop. Well, like, yeah. You would think a gamer girl like her would at least have a gamer laptop, you know? <laughs> There was an angry glare in her eyes as she stared at it. It was like she was trying to intimidate her monitor. Her frustration was plain to see on her face. She was a totally different person than the one who cried as she told me about her powers two days ago. Actually, this was the Kazuki I always saw in the club room, wasn't it? Slam. She slammed her fist against the table in annoyance. You know, maybe you shouldn't play this MMO so much if it makes you angry a lot. Isn't that stressful? I thought I could hear the sound of her gritting,、uh, her cutting her teeth. ゲームにそんなに熱くなるなよまた負けたのか How do you lose in an MMO? I mean, you can, I guess you lose in a raid or something. But usually when I think MMO, you know, the way I play MMO is like, you know, when I was young anyway, I was, I, it was like super casual, you know, just grinding all day. Sometimes I just grinded a level the whole day and that's it, that's all I did. I didn't really do much of anything else. I didn't really get the MMOs for like raids and stuff, you know. It was all about the. The leveling, you know, the farming, the leveling, you know, just put on some chill music or whatever and just grind all day. That was、uh, very relaxing. I don't know. But I don't know. these days, though, I, I probably don't have time to do that anymore. It'd probably be very boring. But, uh, well. She was sulking. If you let her, Kazuki Hana would spend the whole day playing video games. Well, then again, when I think about it, no, actually, I mean, I still grind. It's just, it's just in Fake Go, basically. When you think about it, you know, a lot of anime gadget games are basically like pocket MMOs. It kind of captures that, ex that experience of just like mindless grinding, you know, that, 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 that like,、um, that motivation to like, to like,、uh, to like getting items and watching numbers go up, basically, you know, that whole thing. Kind of like that. I guess sometimes people play MMOs for other reasons, but, you know, I feel like. Gacha games, for the most part, kind of captured that one part of MMOs, the one part that, that I liked, actually, of MMOs. Anyway.、Uh, if you let her, Kazuki Hana would spend the whole day playing video games. Yeah, that sounds like me. She would barely even eat. The only food in the room was dry squid and lollipops, both of which were available in enormous quantities. It freaked me out a little, honestly. It's not very healthy for you. Of course, thanks to them, I was able to eat something without having to leave. How is she able to stay alive from just lollipops and squid? It's not very nutritious. I imagine. Well, I don't know. How much? I wonder, like, dried squid. It's probably very salty. You know, it's not. It probably doesn't have a lot of, like, 
the vitamins in it. I don't know. Or protein, I don't know, anyway. Kazuki ran her fingers through her hair violently, trying to vent her frustration. She'd been angry ever since yesterday. When I asked her what was wrong, she'd said, Yeah, that's what I would say. Basically, she was having withdrawal symptoms from being unable to play her games. Eesh. Then she slowly stood up and headed for the door. Hmm. For the past two days, she'd been unwilling to leave the room. She was probably so thinking about what had happened at the school. I felt bad about it since I was the one who got her involved. Has she recovered? Kind of game. That's what school is for playing video games. That's it. I was too shocked to say anything. She couldn't handle playing the game on her low spec PC anymore. Sure, the one in the club room was pretty high end, but I felt like I solved the mystery of why she was always playing in the club room. It was never clear if that computer belonged to the school or someone else's personal property. It was one of the seven mysteries of the newspaper club. I didn't really try to stop her. I didn't feel like going to school yet. Part of it was that if I did, I'd remember the terror I'd felt. More importantly, I didn't want to answer all the questions I knew Kurusu and Ito were going to ask. And that was why I spent the last two days cooped up in this room. No one knew I was right here I was here right now. I've been getting calls from Saraka and Kurusu all day since yesterday, but I ignored them all. Just like ghosting all your friends. Staying in this like gamer girl's room. I was sure Kazuki was gonna leave, but instead she turned around once she got to the front door. It looked like she was still hesitant about going outside. I've never been able to get into a game as much as Kazuki did. All I ever did was play a few to kill some time. When I saw how Kazuki's life seemed to revolve around her game, I started to wonder what was so interesting about it. Well, you see, it's called, um, you know, the MMO addiction, where you're like, you're so invested in this character in this server that you'll never be able to quit. <laughs> And it's basically like crack. No, is the idea. Kazuki <laughs> nodded, so I sat down in front of the PC. The gray the game yeah, the game screen was still displayed on the monitor. It was a Western game called Call of Counterfield. <laughs> Can you really play Call of Duty in that small laptop? Maybe. Well, if you get like a really old version, you can like you know, to tone down the requirements maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I think they're called uh, FPS, right? Well you, well you see, you use WASD and you shoot the mouse. Kazuki Silato came over to me. She moved my hand to the mouse. My hand was on top of the mouse, and Kazuki's hand was on top of mine. She was so close. <laughs> it's a weird, like, gamer girl fantasy where she coaches you uh, how to play Call of Duty ASMR video. Maybe, I don't know. I mean, she has, she's actually, her, she, usually her, like, most of her dialogue is just ASMR when you think about it. Anyway. She was right on top of me. S-D-W-A-S-D And don't forget R to reload I was too focused on Kazuki to listen to what she was saying, okay Kazuki started the game without me I was placed in a lobby while the game matched me with someone else But only for a second it, before it threw me right into the middle of a match I was so caught off guard that I panicked a little. Video games, what is that? And when I moved, the screen was jerky. It was really hard to control. Even if I found someone to try and shoot, they shoot me first and I die. I ended the game with zero kills and 31 deaths. What a noob. That was not good. And also, yeah, okay, I, I guess she does play more games than MMOs. Because you always see her playing ESO too. But I guess she plays other games. 
I don't know how Kazuki managed to play when the screen was this jerky. The computer specs weren't nearly good enough. I felt like I understood why she was so stressed out. You know, maybe, oh, maybe she wasn't getting enough uh, frames. You know, choppy frames. That's <laughs> you suck. <laughs> well, that's when you go to the config files and basically turn the textures to very, very, very low. You know, more than what the game allows you normally. You know, that's that's how I played. Team Fortress 2, actually. When I didn't have a gaming PC at the time, I just had like a normal PC. Um, I basically, you know, when I had Team Fortress 2, I just made the graphics look like Minecraft. And that's how I played the game. She kept whispering, not that way. Dummy, no, not there. In my ear too, man. Oh, Kazuki's right hand had been on top of mine during the whole game. <laughs> game mode. Kazuki seemed to finally notice how close we were. She was right next to me, so close I could feel her breathing. Her eyes went wide, her face flushed red. Are we so bloody, by the way? You know, I mean, I assume we cleaned that. But have we, have we even taken a shower? You know, aren't we like very stinky? I don't know. Maybe we did. Maybe that's just like off screen that happened. Maybe there was a shower, you know, in this dorm room. Uh, her breath tickled my cheek. Neither of us are showered in two days. Well, there you go. Neither of us are showered in two days. So I can smell the sweat on her body. It's very stinky though. Aren't you very stinky? It's not very comfortable. Look, I think you underestimate how stinky someone is. After like, especially after like that incident where you probably like, Sweat a lot, you know, from running away from the pyrokinetic and everything, and vomiting everywhere, and blood in her body. But very, very smelly. Uh, Risa, real gamers don't need showers, I guess so. I guess it's the gamer odor. Gamer B.O. We were close enough to kiss. Cool cap press would tell me that this was a sign it was okay to push her down. Oh my god, why is everything about that? Uh, we were alone in her room. I couldn't take my eyes off her soft lips. This was bad. I didn't know what was going on, but this had to be bad. Kosuke. <laughs> Ding dong. <laughs> Suddenly, the intercom rang. I came back to my senses and leaped away from Kazuki. That scared me, but it saved me too. Yes, yeah, save it saved the uh, the game rating, I guess. If it had if, if it hadn't interrupted, I might have put my hands on Kazuki, and this would have become an Edo game. But good thing it didn't. That was something that superficial normies did. Yes, I wasn't like those normies. I was a, a more stoic sort of normie, I guess. It's different types of normies, I guess. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Kazuki glanced at me as I tried frantically to calm myself down, then picked up the intercom receiver. Mm. Wait, she didn't talk on the intercom either? How was she supposed to communicate with anyone? Mm. Mm. Kazuki slowly put down the receiver. It looked like she managed to communicate with them. She turned to me, and it looked like something was troubling her. He's your sister. That's right, just talk normally. It'll take more than a word or two to doom me. Huh? Except, it will doom you. Uh, Nona was here. I was doomed! Oh, yes. Why would Kurusu visit Kazuki's room? Of course, there was only one reason. トレーラーハウスには帰ってこない。青葉寮にも戻らない。セリカのところにもいない。伊藤君のところにも行っていない。となれば、その次の選択肢はここでしょう。タクルは友達少ないから、新聞部の部員以外に頼れる人はいなさ
I probably didn't have to worry about her knife wound anymore. But she was mad. This was the extra mad version of Kurusu, yes. I knew it was my own fault for calling Sarika once on Tuesday morning and then ignoring everyone's calls. I wanted to run away if I could. That's where she wanted to start? She didn't care about what happened when I was attacked by the pyrokinetic? Kazuki and I both nodded at the same time. So. Good point. You could tell she was a student council president. Kazuki shook her head. She was embarrassed for some reason. Evidently, she hadn't thought he was a bother. Kazuki kept shaking her head. She seemed to have no intention of talking. Are you... <laughs> Takaru's turn to go, mmm. <laughs> Both Kazuki and I shook our heads as hard as we could. I mean, well, I could understand where she got that idea. So, so we just, we just been at it like rabbits for whole, three whole days, I guess. No, uh, for some reason, Kurisu looked a little relieved. By okay, she probably meant what happened Monday. I was sure she'd been worried too. Of course, I didn't say that was because we killed her. I can't do that. This isn't the no-no route. This is the Hana route, don't you see? So I can't go to Abador. Even if the odds were low now, they weren't zero. アバリオには父さんやユイやユートもいるんだ。カズキならまき込んでもいいっていうこと。それはカズキはすでに巻き込んでしまったんだ。だから、カズキ、カズキ、のカズキをしてるマイクローズ。I at least, I don't know, wipe it down, some tissues? Uh, Kurusu would be really worried about that, of course. <sighs> I nodded. Huh? The secret's out. Kazuki and I looked at one another. Qu uh, Kazuki quickly looked down. I needed to keep her power and what we done at school on Monday a secret. Kurusu smiled sadly. Kurisu suddenly offered us both a lollipop. Yes. <laughs> she was trying to say that these for uh these were for us, evidently. 
まったくセリカとは違う意味でマイペースな子ね Kurosu chuckled inside and took the lollipop. She didn't put it in her mouth, though. <laughs> well, it's,、uh, it's, it's about the, the. What do you call it? The, 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 the spirit of the present, not the actual present. Well, I don't know what you call it. Anyway, I took it and unwrapped it and plopped it in my mouth. No. It tasted like strawberry. A cloyingly sweet flavor soon filled my mouth. Kazuki wa takuru ni mei wak kakerare te nai? この際だから言いたいことがあれば言っていいのよ。うん。いいの？うん。そう。タクルはあなたにとって先輩だけど、ここはあなたの部屋なんだから、主張するところはきちんと主張していいんだからね。うん。それとカズキ、あなたお風呂入ってる？入ってないでしょうタクルがいるせいうーんタスギーズフェイスビキンビートレッドシュシュクーヘッドウォーズマイフォーウォーズビカシュビンプレイントゥメイビデオゲームズワタシガタクルのことミハッティルカライマカラシャワーダケデモアビテクレバソノアトデカイダシニテクレバドーセチャントシタショクジシテナイデショウ簡単なものだけど作ってあげる。No, Kurosu is basically our mom again. You know, she's taking care of everything. And also, I can't imagine like not showering. I don't know. I mean, I can skip like one day, like maybe one day, but I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I feel like very oily, you know? If you don't like shower, because I don't know. The skin gets very oily and greasy. I gotta shower, at least. Well, that'd be great. Kurusu practically shoved Kazuki into the bathroom. Before long, I heard the sound of falling water.、Oh. And then we stare, staring contest. What? 